A little over 24 hours ago, a brand new Cold Fusion vulnerability was announced, and I was going to leave it alone until I saw this email right here from FIS saying that they no longer want to see any reports of this vulnerability within their bug bounty program. And it made me wonder if this is actually bug bounty worthy, and I decided to give it a try, install it locally, and Kind of show you what the vulnerability looks like and then later after we look at the local instance i want to kind of talk about my take on this vulnerability and if it is bug bounty worthy and if it is what are some challenges that you are going to face while looking for this endpoint so let's jump into it really quickly the vulnerability has been assigned the cve 2024 20767 and it is a arbitrary file reading vulnerability and if you're not familiar with arbitrary file read on a box it just typically means that you can read any file configuration files or even sometimes ssh keys on a particular box and it is also important to keep in mind that cold fusion could be installed on any operating system in this case i've installed it on my macbook locally so i can play around with it so if you're looking for a specific file or configuration file keep in mind that it depends on the operating system so windows and linux are going to be what you want to look at and the paths are going to be different but let's jump into a lab really quickly and look at what this looks like there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind and the first thing is this vulnerability exists on a path called slash PMS. And, and if you actually crawl to it and give it a path, what it's going to happen, it's going to load that file and show you the content. In this case, I'm hitting ETC password. And if I hit it, it is just going to give us the content of ETC password on this machine. But if you look at the curl request that we're sending, there is something interesting here. And that is a UUID that is required in order to be able to send this request. And if we take this header out, it's going to remove it entirely from our screen really quick. If we send this out, nothing is going to come back. And we're going to just drop the headers right here. You can see it comes back and says 403 forbidden. So the problem here becomes that you can't just quickly automate this and just hit slash PMS, the module that is for monitoring here. And you need to find a UUID first. And in the blog post here, they mentioned that you can actually hit a an admin endpoint that surprisingly is available and accessible on auth in order to exploit this. And I'm going to actually quickly go to this exploit and grab the URL for it. It is under admin API. So it's CFIDE, which is the default route for the CF or Cold Fusion IDE. And it has an admin API route under server manager. And server manager CFC is actually going to come back and give us this information, which is passing the method get heartbeat. It's going to give us the UUID that we need. So I'm going to quickly just browse through that on my browser. And you can see it's going to come back with some data. It is better to look at the source because you can actually just look for UUID and it just puts that right there. And versus going back to the actual rendered format of this, which is not as easy to read. So I'm just going to grab this very quickly and send our curl request one more time. And as you can see right here, this matches our UUID. I'm going to do UUID equals this. And now you can see that it is actually giving us the content of the ETC password file on my server. But here's when it gets really, really interesting. As you can see, I'm already on my terminal looking at the folder where CFIDE and the administrator folder is located. And if I actually go back a few folders, we can see that we're in a WW root. And a lot of times it is fairly easy to either hide this CFIDE folder or actually just remove it. So the challenge here becomes that you first identify Cloud Fusion instances, and then you find a way to access the CFID if it is not removed. So here's where it gets really tricky. A lot of times this is actually available, but you have to find a path traversal within that Nginx or server or backend server that's being used to serve the content to you and then traverse yourself out into this directory. And so in this case, a good place to take a look at is Orange Size talk at DEFCON where he talks about breaking parser logics and just kind of figuring out what method in that works and then being able to traverse out of a particular folder or file that's already available and hitting CFIDE. There's also a couple other ways to identify this. Honestly, what I would do personally is I would create a nuclei template and have it hit a invalid folder. I'm going to just type this on the screen. Maybe it's nahamsek dot dot slash and then traversing into this and finding a valid path maybe it is your cf script and i think there is a file here that we can hit let me actually just pull it up really quickly we can do scripts 
and have it hit something like dump JSP, for example, and see if that file exists and if it matches the content of dump.js in this case, and if it returns it, you have access to it. The second approach here is to look for port 8500. That is a default port that I have seen. It automatically serves for at least the admin panel and some of the applications that I've seen on Shodan. So that's another thing you can keep in mind. And there's other couple of things you can do is hit the IP address, for example. Maybe if you hit it by IP, it may give you actually access to the uh, folder where the admin panel is created. But there's also one last thing that's really, really cool to take a look at when it comes down to just these instances. So let's take a quick look at making a curl request back to localhost 8500. You can see that it's coming back, giving us some data. I don't really care about that stuff, but I wanna see the headers here. If we go back to it, we can see that there is a few things that come back. Again, this is a default instance, but I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of a similarity in a lot of these cases. One is you want to see if the cookie has any mentions of C Fusion, not Cloud Fusion, but C Fusion. Let me put that into your keywords for your nuclei. And then the second thing is you can always try and hit an invalid path. So like something, something CFM, Nahamsek CFM, and see what comes back. And if you see an error similar to this one, then that means there is a default access to a Cloud Fusion instance, and you can just narrow your search down. My take on this vulnerability is that I don't know if a lot of large bug bounty organizations are going to be vulnerable to this, but honestly, if you have a good scanner and you have a lot of good historic data, it may be worth looking at it and seeing which ones of these come back and give you access to these two vulnerable endpoints. And if you're watching this and you use Cloud Fusion for your organization, well, guess what? They have dropped a patch. Go patch it already and make sure you prevent hackers from abusing this. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this kind of helps you understand this vulnerability better. Drop me a comment. Let me know, do you want to see more CVE videos and me kind of talking about it and analyzing it from a bug bounty perspective or not? I'll be happy to make them in the future. All right, peace.